Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today in this video guys, I am going to do an in-depth review of this iFlight Zing 2 1404 4600 KV motor guys. These are very small size and lightweight motor guys which are normally used on Cinevop. In addition to unboxing guys, I will be also telling you what are the technical functions and features which this motor has to offer. Towards the end of the video guys, I will also be telling you how to connect this motors onto your flight controller guys. So ensure that guys, you watch this video till the end so that you do not miss out on any important information or instructions that i have to share before we move further guys if you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you get the notifications for my new videos let's get started so guys before we go through some of the technical functions and features which this motor has to offer let's quickly unbox this as you can see guys whenever you purchase this this comes in this transparent packaging on to the top side guys you have the branding of iFlight on to the top and then there are four motors inside this is a transparent packaging with the barcode and the labeling on to the back there is nothing more on to the top let's quickly open and see the contents inside So there are four identical motors which is available here in this packet guys. So I'll be unboxing only one of it so as to be able to walk you through some of the features. So here you can see there are four motors guys. So I'll keep the three aside. As you can see on the top of the box guys, it is a Zing series motor which is advanced power system. On to the back side guys, you have the QR code for Instagram, Facebook and WeChat so as to be able to follow iFlight on social media. On to the side guys, it has a branding of Zing 2 and then it is 1404 4600 KV motors. So as a thumb of rule guys, in my previous unboxing videos guys of the motors you would have seen, higher the KV rating guys, you will have lower the voltage rating. So this motor guys is supported from 2S battery to 4S battery only guys. So guys, if you are going to connect any battery which is above 4S guys is going to damage is the coil of this motor guys so ensure that guys whenever you use these motors you do not connect a power which is higher than 4s which is super important on to the other side guys it has a link to the website for iFlight Instagram and Facebook if you guys want you can go through it it does not come with any user manual or instruction manual guys so towards the end guys I will also be telling you how to connect this and wire this on to your flight controller now let's quickly open the box and see the motor itself so guys whenever you open the box guys it comes with this top side foam padding guys so as to be able to protect this motor from shock another thing that it came along with is the screws guys so as to be able to install this motor onto your drone frame guys these are m2 screws guys which came along with this so these are small motor guys so if your drone frame requires a larger motor or requires a mount which is higher than m2 you will not be able to use this motor so ensure that guys whenever you purchase this motor your drone frame is compatible with m2 screw holes so as to be able to mount this motor inside the box guys as you can see it comes with foam padding onto the side guys so as to be able to protect your motor from damage from shock or scratches so let's take out the motor guys so here you can see there is nothing more inside guys so let's keep the box aside now here you can see guys this is the motor itself this is a blue color motor guys this is machine cnc made top guys onto the top guys here you can see the shaft so as to be able to mount the propeller onto this stone frame guys in addition to that guys to hold the propeller guys there are four holes these are m2 holes as well guys so as to be able to screw your propeller onto the top of your motor guys this is a brushless motor guys so your top straighter is going to rotate so as to be able to rotate the shaft so whenever you screw your shaft onto the top side frame guys so whenever your frame rotates your propeller will be rotating as well so your center shaft is just to support the propeller and the screws is to hold the propeller onto the frame of the motor guys so that is what it is used for onto the side guys it has a branding of zing 2 and then you have a rating which mentioned here as 1404 14 is your width and 4 is your height guys so that is what it is meant so this information basically is used to calculate the straighter volume so as to be able to tell you the torque and the speed at which it is going to be rotating so in a minute guys i will be telling you how to calculate the torque and how to calculate the speed of the motor and what does that specification means just to let you know guys this is 1404 4600 kv which is printed onto the side guys onto the back side guys you have the mounting holes this is the base guys through which you 
install this motor onto your drone frame as i told you before guys these are m2 holes guys so ensure that guys your drone frame is compatible with m2 holes so as to be able to correctly install the strand of motor onto your drone frame so as you can see guys there are three wires which is coming out from this motor guys so guys this is a three-phase brushless motor guys which is going to be used onto your drone frame so as to be able to fly your drone so guys this is what you have as a physical specification guys now let's quickly see the technical specifications and functions which this motor has to offer so as per the technical specification goes you would have seen the reading on the motor guys the motor says it was 1404 4600 kb 4s motor so 1404 guys relates to the torque of the motor 4600 kb relates to the rpm of the motor and 4s as you know guys relates to the rating or the voltage at which your motor operates now let's quickly see what does that mean and how does these number corresponds to each of these features so as i told you before guys the torque is directly proportional to the stator volume and 1404 is exactly that so 1404 gives you the width and the height of the motor guys so 14 multiplied by 04 gives you the area or proportional volume of the straighter guys so here you can see 1404 relates to 56 as i told you before guys torque is the load bearing capacity of the motor so higher the torque guys higher is the load bearing capacity or power of the motor so here you can see 56 is the load bearing capacity of the torque it's not that it's good or bad guys so the torque is a relative word so you can have a better torque than other motor or have an inferior torque than other motor so here you can see it's the absolute 56 value gives you nothing more than the comparison to another motor whether it is better than other motor or worse than other motor so that is what you can take out of this so higher the torque value guys better is the load bearing capacity of the motor second thing is your rating guys so here you have the rating of 4s as you know 1s battery has 4.2 volt so 4s battery will have four times of 4.2 volt which is 16.8 volts so that is your battery rating guys the voltage at which your motor would be operating higher the voltage guys lower is the current requirement because of the wattage so every motor is designed for a specific wattage and the wattage is nothing more than voltage multiplied by current so here higher the voltage lesser is the current requirement and lesser is the load supplying capacity of the battery that you would require so higher the rating is the better but here you have 4s which is a normal or average battery that you use so which is also something really nice so last thing is your rpm rpm is here you can see your kv rating multiplied by the voltage at which you operate so here you have the kv rating of 4600 multiplied by 4s battery which is 16.8 which ultimately leads to 77 to 80 rpm it's the rounds per minute so this rpm is at no load what that means is basically when you have not put on the propeller on the motor and it is in the resting stage not flying on the ground and whenever you put a voltage onto the motor this is the speed that you would see definitely whenever you put the propeller or your drone is flying the actual rpm is going to be lesser because of the air friction or the weight that it has to bear so rpm is going to get lower than what you have expected but the rpm that you see here 77 to 80 is at no load so rpm corresponds to the flying response time of your drone so higher the rpm higher that you can go and better it would be the handling and the response time guys so higher the rpm higher is the speed at which your propeller rotates and better will be the control so that is what it means so torque and rpm together controls the load bearing capacity and the speed of the drone so higher the torque better is the load bearing capacity higher the rpm better is the speed or the response of your drone so that is what it means but guys like everything you have some exceptions here so as you can see here so wider the motor guys you will have higher torque because of the higher stator volume at the same time guys since your motor is wider 
the load distribution is farther away from the shaft of the motor guys which is why it will have higher inertia so whenever you have wider motor guys whenever you have a change in the rpm that you have requested it will take some time to slow down the motor or change the speed of the motor because of the inertial volume which is distributed away from the shaft so thinner motor guys will normally respond faster than the wider motor but then guys here you have the conflict wider the motor guys higher is the surface area and better is the heat dissipation capacity so as you know whenever the motor runs at higher speed it's going to draw more current so it will get hot so guys it needs an air or surface area so as to be able to distribute and dissipate the heat so that your motor does not get overheated or does not get damaged so you see guys if you have larger surface area you have higher rating of the motor and you can have more power with this guys you will have larger surface area but you will have lower response to rpm change so you will have to always find a balance between the volume of the stator and the response time of your motor so that is something that you need to consider so as i told you guys higher is the kv value higher is the rpm at higher rpm it's going to draw more current in addition to discharging your battery faster guys it will also generate more heat so you would need a wider surface area to be able to compensate for the heat so that it gets dissipated so that is something that you need to always consider and the last one guys as you know lower the rpm higher is the torque so there is a trade off between the rpm and the torque as well as i have told you guys higher the torque higher is the load bearing capacity higher the rpm higher is the speed you need both of them to be higher but it cannot be at the same time as you would have noticed guys whenever you have higher load guys the rpm of the motor gets reduced so as to generate more power so as to be able to lift more weight so there is a trade off so higher the rpm guys you will have lower torque and whenever you increase the load guys the rpm gets reduced so whenever you design the drone guys it is always good to consider to have 3 to 1 ratio between the torque to weight or optimally it could be 5 to 1 so as you can see guys whenever you buy a motor guys you need to consider all these specifications so that these are all in balance so as to give you ample of torque ample of rpm and enough surface area so as to be able to dissipate the heat which is generated by the motor during the operation so it is important guys to select an optimal motor for the drone depending upon the load that you have or the size of the drone that you are building so these are the technical specification guys now let's quickly see how to connect the motor on to the esc so here as a general rule any drone would normally have an esc which is this this is called your esc or motor control unit which basically is connected to your motor the three phase motor that you normally have the three wires coming in is normally connected on to your esc which will then depending upon your flight condition will be able to deliver the power to each of the motor and also controls the direction of the motor using the control wires that is coming to this motor control unit from your flight controller so you will normally have six pads on each side for a quadcopter which will be marked from m1 m2 m3 and m4 so you will be connecting three wires for each motor to this motor control unit and this is how your wiring will go but then ensure that guys you connect these motors in the right sequence and i'm going to tell you what does that mean so here you see when your drone is facing front your esc is placed like this the there are motor numbers you see here motor 1 2 3 and 4 which is also marked here on your esc ensure that guys your motor 2 is your front side right motor so here you can see the left and the right direction the right motor on the front side is m2 right motor on the back side is m1 left motor on the front side is m4 and left motor on the back side is m3 
so although guys in all modern flight controllers you can change the sequence you can change the direction of the rotation of the motor in the program but if you do this in this way in the correct way you will have lesser configuration to do in your flight controller to be able to operate it in a correct so there is no right and wrong you can always connect these motor in any sequence as you like as long as your flight controller has a capability to reorganize the motor and then arrange them in a correct way so that your flight controller knows which motor is connected at which place so that it can properly operate the drone so guys this is it this is how you connect your motor to your esc and this is a brief description on how to select the motor and what kind of technical specifications that you have on the motor so i hope you guys like this video if you guys like this video please do not forget to hit that like button if you have any questions or comment please leave them in the comment section below i will try and answer as soon as possible if you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you get the notifications for all my new videos thank you guys thanks for watching and clear skies